Do you love old cars and trucks? Join us on Bring Them Back to Life, where we search the salvage yards and backyards of America to find that gold mine of a parts car or that restorable gem in the rough. Come with us down memory lane as we elevate the status of our salvage yards to outdoor museums of automotive history. Here is my 1956 Chevrolet convertible. The damage on the car was from the rear of the front tire to the front of the rear tire only. All right, now we're going to do here today, take a few measurements. This is the back brace panel of the car, which holds the back side of the floor together to separate your side pillars here to add reinforcement. What we want to do is take a measurement from our existing floor pan, which curves to the end. We want to get somewhere in the same ballpark vicinity of this top weld. Now mind you, we're not going to get it perfect, but we'll get it pretty close. It appears to be about five and a quarter, five and an eighth. It gets actually shorter towards the inside. Five inch, I think, is a pretty rounded number where we can cut our old panel out on the other side here so we can temporarily mock it up and scribe where we need to cut out the old floor pan. Just going to take a quick measurement of the new panel before we cut it. All right, you can see our four mounting brace holes is where this goes into the support mount of the car and the actual body mount. It's a very strong structure point. As I said earlier, five inches is going to be about a good mark. You don't want to go too far close to the mount because then you weaken the metal even more. So we'll try to make it. I'm going to stay between the two marks all the way to the end. You can't really use a straight edge on this because this is not a straight piece of metal. We're cutting it actually the curvature of the car. So we're going to try to stay somewhere between these lines and we can trim and fit as we get over to the edge and see what happens. Little power tools make life a lot easier. Let's see, make a cut. Now remember, this is very noisy, very loud, and is not very easy to cut. So just take your time, go slow, be patient. Makes a lot of noise. All right, I'm going to have to steal the cameraman here, folks, for a few minutes. So we're going to go to a short break, and we'll come back and show you what it's like after it's all cut out. All right, we're back, and we're going to cut the final pieces here. Watch yourself at home there. These parts can go flying. You 
see, it's obviously not a straight line, but it's contoured, more bent in and up towards the back as we were measuring in the car earlier, if you remember, that we had a shorter gap over here. It was five and a quarter, roughly five and a half, down to four inches. So we want to kind of taper it so we can make it fit nice and flush to the car. See, we have our support body mounts, which we want to stay a good inch and a half away from, which I have achieved and be pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just temporarily set this in the car. Then we'll put the seat belts in and we'll go for a ride. Not yet, that'll be in a couple more episodes. Always being very careful. You don't want to cut yourself. Nor hurt anybody or anything around you. Now as you guys can see at home, the floor is meant to go to the end. This car has this brace which we talked about earlier which supports the pillar and supports the floor. Now as our floor comes down I have to measure from this center hole on the car to the edge here with an angle which I have a tool to square which I will mark out on here where I need to be to cut this and taper off to the end so we can make our floor. We'll weld little pieces in after we're done, but we want to get a rough idea of where we're going first before we cut it all out. So let me get some tools here. Be right back in a minute. Okay, I'm standing here in front of Timeless Automotive with Leonard Kyle, the owner of the business, and he just loves old cars, and particularly some Jaguars and a thir certain 35 Auburn. So, Leonard, tell us about why you love old cars and how you think some of it's changed while we're looking at some of the stuff you have for sale. Well, I've always had an appreciation for mechanics and uh, appreciation for uh, man's ability to take one object and make it into another one. You know, we've got guns, we've got cars, uh, we've got airplanes. Uh, guns and, our, and uh, cars are affordable to the average man, not an airplane. So if you're looking for something that's a bit nostalgic, uh, carries some value, uh, and something that an average person can appreciate, I always thought a classic car was the way to go. You can't go wrong. In fact, it's, it's a better investment than buying a brand new car. You buy a brand new car at five years after you purchase it, it's worth about 50% of the value. If you buy an antique car or a classic car, uh, you get in at the right price, uh, about 10 years it can double this price. So I've always just had an appreciation for cars. My grandfather worked on them. Uh, most of my family's worked on them. So, and uh, just, I love old cars. So show us some of the ones you have here in the, in the lot, Leonard, okay. that you're willing to sell. Okay, great. Well, we'll start here. This is. Uh, I mean, if you, if you, you can keep filming. You can always edit this out. But this, this is the gentleman here who also was looking to buy a car. How's it going? Hey, how are you? Good. good. <laughs> this is my buddy from Cuba. <laughs> Speaking of cars, you know, in, in Cuba, they uh, mostly the 50s and 60s, not very many 60s, mostly 50 cars. 50s, 40s. 50s and 40s are, 20s, 30s. Are, 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 are being used. From the 20s to the 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, I see a lot of video clips from Cuba today because people are going in there and I don't see anything newer than 57. Up to 60. Up to 60. Like the 16 pounds, you know. Yes? Okay. Yeah. And most of them are four doors and they say taxi in the window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Joe here was uh, looking at that uh, 56. That's out back. So, so, so you're, you're Joe? Yeah. You, you're Joe? Can, can, can you talk on camera okay? You, yeah, that's you're, fine. You're here, you're on vacation or business? Just business. Business, and you. Well, I live here. You, know. you live here, but. What is that for? YouTube. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. Oh, yes. Okay. And it's about old cars and trucks and salvage yards, and I and I spotted Leonard's collection, and, and I said I got to stop and meet this guy because that's what I do. I, I want to show people where there's parts and where there's cars if they're looking for them. So you actually have cars. Yeah, I got old cars over in Cuba. In Cuba. Yeah. Oh. And I rebuilt it. And just enjoy, you know. So you, you have the freedom to come back and forth. Right, right. Yeah, I'm American, you know. Yeah. So I can go back and forth anytime I want. 
So you can bring parts back for all your friends? Just parts, yeah. not parts. cars. Not cars, okay. I was wondering if somebody was going to be able to do that for, for the people yeah, in Cuba. I built over there already a 56, I built a 53, and I built a Harley, so. Did you see the documentary that's on YouTube about the drag, store, drag racers building hot rods in Cuba? Who's building hot rods over there? They drag race. It, not yeah, legal, do. but yeah, he yeah, said yeah. they made a documentary. It's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we try to race over there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I, I like this kind of stuff, you yeah, know, okay. and I, that's what I thought. I love old cars, and I'm saying these, all my brothers in Cuba, they got these old cars. Where, where are they getting parts? We got loads of parts. <laughs> Places like this. <laughs> <laughs> what we have here is a 1969 Daimler 420 limousine. I bought the car because the guy was getting ready to leave the state and he was didn't want to take the car with him. So I purchased the car to salvage, to, really to save it, rather than salvage it. And uh, uh, it's for sale. Uh, it is a right-hand drive because they only made uh, the Daimler limousines for uh, royalty and also for uh, European uh, customers. Um, you see them sometimes in um, South Africa and some of the dictators in Africa used to use them and royalty used to use them and it is uh, um, all there. The uh, drivetrain is in it but it's for sale. Uh, the vehicle behind it is a 1949 um, Dodge Hornet. This one was brought in for a customer for us to redo. And I told him he needed some parts. So he goes out and buy a whole nother parts car that is better than his original car. So even after we've done a lot of work to the engine, got it running, and I told him he needed a, a carburetor because that carburetor uh, needs to be either be rebuilt or um, replaced. He goes out and buy a whole nother better vehicle, but he wants to sell this one now. So I'm not exactly sure, but contact, that was for sale. That's so nice that all the stainless yeah, and chrome. Everything is there. And it's so nice. Yeah. For 1950. And 49. A 49. Yeah. Uh-huh. When I show you the inside of this Daimler right quick as well. That's got plenty of leg room. It had electric windows. This one, the, the one that separates the driver from the oh, passenger. Right, the compartment. Right, and it also has jump seats. Jump seats. Vander cars. Vanderplush. Van Vanderpass. Yeah. Ah. That's a P yeah. Vanderplush. It is uh, uh, a um, company that used to make the lemons. It looks like they made the same bodies for Rolls Royce. Did it? <laughs> this is a um, 1978 Blackstone uh, coupe. Blackstone was a company that produced cars in the late 70s to the early 80s in North Little Rock. They were a kit car company, for lack of a better term, a kit car company, but they are actually factory built. There's a factory in North Little Rock that produced these cars and they only produced close to about 250 of them. Um, they use the um, Chevy Monza as a base they would take a tube of a frame and build it out and build it similar to the way you see Excaliburs and Tiffany's built. But these were uh, only produced in North Little Rock by the Blackstone Car Company. In fact, you, if you Google it, you'll find very few pictures of it. After I purchased it, it took me a, took me a while to uh, 
find any uh, information on them or pictures. They're very rare. I mean, extremely rare. Now this one isn't extremely rare, very recognizable. It looks, oh, yeah. looks like there's no engine though, sitting a little high. Yeah, this <laughs> is a, actually a 67 Le Mans that a customer brought in and what we're going to do is do an LS swap. Uh, taking the original drivetrain out, putting a uh, LS 5.3 um, with uh, the 4L60E drivetrain. So once we get it done, he's going to send it over to uh, uh, Body and Paint. But, uh, and pretty it, straight, pretty yeah. uh, solid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's not for, for sale for sale now, but once he gets done with it, he may want to sell it. Uh, these two are, uh, that, that's really not for sale. I'm going to use that one for advertising. I was going to uh, take it, place a uh, chain link towards the center so that you can steer it from the center and slightly behind the driver's seat. I have a full skeleton that I was going to put in there. And I was going to advertise that if you can't stop texting and driving, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's all right. This, is a, this one would be for sale. My intentions here was to actually take that and make a convertible wedding car out of it. We're going to take it and re-chassis it. Take it off that chassis, put it on a Buick Roadmaster, a 90, 93 Buick Roadmaster, re-chassis that car on that, and then uh, make a, a convertible out of it and use it as a wedding car. But it can be bought because I've got about seven of those. <laughs> what year era is that's that? A, that's a 1959 Jaguar Mark IX. The, the, the Mark 9s, Mark 8s, Mark 7s are all similar on that body style. In fact, that's a, four, that's a 59. This one is a 58, and there's no different. I've got a 57 and a 56. There's some subtle differences about them, but you'd have to know the car to know the difference about the way the bumper is made, a little bit about the way the, the skirts are made. But to the average person driving down the road, if I had them both the same color and they went past you, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. We are going to try to cut some of the old floor out. <clears throat> you want to be careful because we do have a frame underneath here. Even though this metal is not all that secure, we're going to make a small cut through here first along the seam line, cut a section out, and then we'll cut it sections at a time. If we try to cut the whole thing out at once, we're going to lose track of where we're going and we're going to have a big hole and not enough metal to fill it. So let me get right in here and make sure our cameraman can see. Be very careful. Always remember this is a very sharp object. This blade can cut right through your hand, finger, anywhere, so always be aware of where that blade is. I think we might have made it up to our frame. Alright, now we're obviously not cutting through here. We're going to go more forward to our seam up on the top. That's where we want to be, but for right now, we just want to cut this off and then we'll peel that back off the old uh, floor support because if we try cutting it out now, chances are the support's going to come out with it and we don't want that. So we want to try to go in the right direction to go forward and try not to go backwards. Let's see if we can get a couple more cuts here. All right, she's definitely cooperating. I'm going to go on a sideways cut. Trying to cut up and around. Oh, looks like we found a body mount. All right, now I'm going to come to the back side, try to cut a section up.
making small little incisions. Pick away at it. I'm actually going to push the floor down, trying to make a straight cut back. You see the frame inside there, that's what we want to stay away from. I don't know if you can see, I'm pushing down the floor. We don't want to hit the frame. Then we're asking for trouble. So I'm going to take another approach right now. I'm actually using my floor jack and I'm going to push the old floor up. That way we can see what's rotting and what's like holding. Say you like old trucks. If you've been looking for one and you've had no luck. Because with us, a car that won't start down will not get you into trouble. One that won't stop will. Walk about, you'll be glad that you came.